Our most recent adventure together was filled with first time experiences, especially for Dad. Dad's first time ever at Pop Century, the Flower and Garden Festival in the Void experience, and trying a scooter at Walt Disney World. For years, my grandmother has used a wheelchair at Walt Disney World. It's one that we would bring with us, very lightweight. You could bring it on rides, put it on the bus, and just lift it up onto the bus, put it in a minivan, super easy to get around. But the scooter was a very different experience. In today's in this video, I'm going to go over all of my thoughts about renting a scooter at Walt Disney World, how you do it, the whole process of getting on rides and the buses, and things that we think can be improved in the future. Let's start first with why I rented the scooter for Dad. You may recall from our Disney cruise together, Dad can walk. He has the ability to do that, but going to Walt Disney World is very different than going on a Disney cruise, especially if you're walking with me. You're going to walk at least five, maybe seven miles every single day at Walt Disney World world, and that's just not something I wanted to put Dad through. I wanted Dad to be able to experience all of the best parts of Walt Disney World, sharing the magic with us in the vlogs, and most importantly, not be exhausted every single place that we went to. So when I was thinking about solutions, the scooter made perfect sense. Before our adventure, I decided to look up different scooter companies that work directly with Disney, and I found that they have a list of several different companies. I will include that link in the description of this video, but we decided to go with Buena Vista rentals. That is not a paid endorsement, it's just the one I chose. I made the reservation online and then I called them to confirm that it would be ready for pickup at Pop Century on the day we arrived, and they told me that I could pick it up from Bell Services. I found that kind of strange. I figured they would have to deliver the scooter to the resort so that we could use it throughout our adventure and then pick it up at the end, but that is not how it works. You actually just go to Bell Services and they work with the company right there. You can pick it up, sign that piece of paper saying you checked it out, out, have it for your entire adventure, and then at the end of the adventure, you return it to Bell Services. It is so convenient. When we arrived at Pop Century a little bit late because of the weather, we picked up the scooter, and as soon as Dad started to use it, we realized right away this was a very smart decision. Dad sat down in the scooter, pulled the throttle, and it shot off. I'm telling you, these things can zip around like you've never seen before. It was at half speed, and that is far faster than we can walk. We realized very quickly that Dad would have no trouble keeping up with me, but how was I going to keep up with him? He turned down the speed a little bit, and we ended up walking together for most of the adventure. We went from the lobby of Pop Century to our resort room, took the elevator up, made it to the room, and ran into our first speed bump. Where were we going to park the scooter at night? This is Pop Century, not a moderate or deluxe resort. There's not as much space in there as the other resorts. Where were we going to put it? It was actually rather funny. We were trying to put it into every nook and cranny all around the room. We actually tried almost inside the bathroom for a moment. Eventually, we did find that spot right in front of the window with the side of the scooter to the cabinet, and then we would turn the chair around so we'd have free access to the door. It was a great spot. Now, after we got back from the adventure, several friends mentioned to me that we could have parked the scooter outside of the room. There's that little alcove between the two doors of the plug right there, and you're absolutely right. You definitely can park the scooter there, but we, first of all, didn't think of it. Second, even knowing that now, I would rather have it in the room. That way we don't have to deal with the maybe dew in the morning, a little bit wet on the chair, or bugs crawling all over it. Just knowing where it is, being nice and clean and ready in the morning, that's just how I prefer it. That was our first day, kind of a travel day because of the weather, but on the next day we did go into the parks and start to realize some of the tougher aspects of using a scooter at Walt Disney World. Before we arrived at the parks, we had to make it to the parks, and the way we did that was by using the Disney buses, and overall, it was a very easy process. They would lower the ramp, you drive the scooter up on the ramp, you park it into its spot, they belt you in, the ramp comes back, then all the other guests come on board. The most difficult part of getting the scooter on the bus was definitely parking it into its little spot that was available where the belts were. Trying to get it in there was sometimes difficult for dad to navigate, and secondly, it was actually relatively long for the space, but we realized after the second bus ride, the bus driver told us they don't fit too well with the basket on the back. So we realized you can actually take the basket off every time you get on the bus. After we realized that you could take the basket off the back, it got so much easier, so much more convenient to put it into its spot. So if you have a scooter with a basket on the back, double check to see if that basket will come off every time you come on and off the bus. That's just something to think about. By the last day of our adventure, Dad and I had a process down. He would pull the chair up to the spot in the line. I would take the basket off. He would put the scooter into its spot. I would put the basket underneath the chair in the bus, 
and then we would make it there, he'd come off of the bus, I would put the basket back on, and then we would be gone. So it was a little bit of time, but we had it down by the end. Another form of transportation that we would use to get to Walt Disney World included the monorail, and the monorail was so much easier than the buses when it comes to the mobility scooter. All we had to do to use the monorail with the mobility scooter is wait for the cast member to ask us where we were going, they would put a ramp down, dad would drive up the ramp, no need to remove the basket in the back, they would remove the ramp, and by the time we made it to our destination where the monorail was going, the ramp would already be there, dad would slide right off the ramp, we'd make our way. No need to remove the basket, it was super easy. Once we were off the buses and monorails and made our way into the parks, we realized the first big dilemma of using a scooter at Walt Disney World, the crowds. I've gotta tell you, I've got a whole new appreciation of trying to navigate scooters around Walt Disney World while crowds are all around you. Guests are moving in all directions at all times, trying to cross the street, kind of move in front of you, maybe a kid jumps out. It's really, really tough to drive, especially in thick crowds. It's funny to think about, but when we're walking around a park like at Walt Disney World and there are guests around us, it really doesn't affect us that much. Guests to our right, guests to our left, just kind of walking by, guests walk in front of me, I can walk this way. We're pretty agile. As human beings, we can move pretty quickly on our feet. But when you're driving a scooter through a Walt Disney World park, you kind of have to have a special awareness. This person on my right could accidentally just walk in front of me without even realizing that I'm there and I need to slow down in advance. Or maybe this kid will kind of run across the street for the balloons. You never know when something like that's going to happen. You just have to be thinking ahead and don't forget to slow down. Those scooters can move extremely fast, even at one quarter speed. They're quick, they really are. And I can tell you from experience, getting hit by a scooter is unbelievably painful. I'm happy to tell you that dad did not hit a single person, not once, not even close. He was being extra cautious to make sure he did not hit anyone. So if you're driving one of these scooters around Walt Disney World, make sure you're like my dad and turn that speed all the way down or close to the very, very bottom so that you can keep up with traffic but not hit anyone if someone accidentally walks in front of you. Now on to rides and the experience of using the mobility scooter to get to and from the rides or go onto the rides varied from ride to ride. On some attractions like Navi River Journey, Slinky Dog Dash, and even Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Dad could use his scooter all the way through the line until he reached the ride car. Then he would step out of the scooter, the cast member would take the scooter, Dad would walk maybe two or three steps, and then step into the ride vehicle. Very convenient. By the time we made it to the end of the ride, a cast member would have moved Dad's scooter from the entrance area to the exit area. So Dad would step out of the ride vehicle and back into his scooter, super convenient. Now, you don't leave your key in the scooter. You actually take your key with you and they put the scooter into neutral. There's a little trigger handle on the back that puts the entire scooter into neutral and they can just push it where it needs to go. On rides like Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, Peter Pan's Flight, and Pirates of the Caribbean, you would park your scooter outside in kind of a waiting area, take the key out, don't forget to do that every time, walk through the queue, experience the ride, and then walk back to your scooter. Now, if you need additional assistance and you can't walk quite as many steps, I remember my grandmother was in her wheelchair, we went to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, and instead of going through the entire queue, we would actually go through the exit, they would slow the ride down, then my grandmother would maybe take five, maybe 10 steps to get onto the ride, and she would do the same thing getting off the ride. So it depends on your situation. We were using a scooter, so it was a little bit different, but if you're in a wheelchair or other mobility issues, there are other alternatives. Finally, there were a few attractions like Star Tours and Spaceship Earth where there would be a totally separate way to get on the ride for those with disabilities and in scooters. For Spaceship Earth, you would go by the exit, check in with the cast member, you'd wait a few minutes, and then they would take you through the exit to get to the ride vehicles. For Star Tours, there was this totally separate wheelchair ramp where you'd go all the way up basically to the entrance of Star Tours, go behind the attraction, and then they would let you in through the exit. So there would be two chairs waiting for us when the following ride had finished and we'd make our way on to the Star Tours attraction. There are, so there are some special ways. As a side note, Dad and I would leave our resort refillable mugs and our umbrellas in the basket of the scooter every single time we left the scooter alone in a Walt Disney World park. And every time we got back, they were there. I expected nothing less, but I wanted to note that. For both of the fireworks shows that we saw, Dad and I went to the handicap viewing area so Dad could stay in his chair and experience the fireworks. It was a great view and I'm very happy that Disney had that there. One side note, if you are someone who does stand and you're not using a scooter, you're just with someone who isn't a scooter, you wanna to move to the back 
of the wheelchair viewing area or make sure you're seated or kneeling all the way down so you're not blocking the view of anyone in a wheelchair or scooter behind you. For illuminations, the handicap viewing area was right by the fence on the right hand side of the fast pass viewing area, a great spot especially if you're seated. For Happily Ever After, we were located behind that fountain near the hub. There's actually two handicap viewing areas, one behind the fountain on the right side, one behind the fountain on the left side. One interesting side note, at Hollywood Studios for the Magic of Animation and Star Wars fireworks shows, there was no handicap viewing section. I feel like I've seen a handicap viewing section there in the past, but when Dad and I were there, the section was not there. So Dad had to stand for that show. It was no problem for him. He kind of hung on to my shoulder as we were watching together, but it's just something maybe Disney to think about in the future. I've got to tell you, I was super impressed with how easy it was to rent and use a scooter at Walt Disney World. Navigating the pathways, going through security, getting on different transportation systems, it's as if the entire park was made for disabilities and scooters in mind. The scooter cost me a little more than $200 for the entire week, and Dad and I feel like it was well worth the cost, and Dad even mentioned at one point that he doesn't want to experience Disney again without the scooter. But, but at the same time, this really makes the experience much more pleasant. Yeah, you can just enjoy these views. Yeah. On one day during our adventure, I walked over eight miles in one day, and that would have just been uncomfortable for Dad, so this was the perfect solution. Those are my thoughts about renting a mobility scooter at Walt Disney World. If you've rented one before, maybe for a family member or for yourself, let us know your thoughts about it in the comments below. What did you like? What do you think Disney can improve in the future? Maybe you're thinking about it now. Let me know your thoughts as well. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me. Until next time, have a magical day. Thank you.